what's up? This is my reenactment of the Trevor part of the reunion. Okay, don't make me laugh. Now, I'm Nick Lachey. All right, folks, and speaking of roided out morons, let's welcome Trevor to the stage. Now, Trevor, we have the text that prove you came on the show with a girlfriend. What do you have to say for yourself? Yeah, sure. You can leave. All right, welcome to Taste Take. If you're new here, today, we're breaking down the Love is Blind Season 6 reunion, and I'll be talking about it like you've seen it too. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular taste takers, this review is not late. It's only been 10 minutes since the reunion went live. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call Jimmy time. Boom! Episode 13. This one's called The Reunion. We start off with Nick and Vanessa role-playing in the pods, and about 13 seconds in, we think these cheese balls are going to give us another one of their patented cheesy performances with extra cheese. They explain that this is the first time that the reunion is going to be filmed where the show is filmed at and the first time that we're going to get some ex-cast members as part of the show. So for returning cast members representing season three, we have Alexa and Brennan and Colleen and Brett. And if you remember who Colleen and Brett are, please Email me from the link in my bio. And representing season four, we have Chelsea and Kwame, and of course, Brett and Tiffany. I guess y'all wasn't the only ones that hated season five. And rounding it out for the non-couples, we got Izzy, Gigi, and Mika. Is it Mika or Micah? Okay, so remember I said Nick and Vanessa started off with their normal cheese, and they increased the level of cheese almost immediately with their stupid jokes about the EpiPen, about picking a number and 80s red flag nails. But I have to live in my truth and y'all come here for truth. So I have a responsibility to give y'all what y'all come here for. I ain't even gonna hold you. After that intro, Nick and Vanessa done gave us probably one of the best reunions of all time. So let's just get into it. They start off with Amy and Johnny and good for them because this reunion came on at 9 p.m. my time zone. They try to sneak these two in at the end, and I'm for sure going to be asleep. And y'all watched it. It was just as boring as you thought it would be. But y'all supposed to come to Love is Blind for the love, so there go to love. And honestly, a lot of y'all be like, Love is Blind was created for Cam and Lauren to meet, and that's it. But I think that's unfair, because, you know, this little montage is to show us that, look, amidst all the drama, sometimes this shit works. You know, even Nick was like, in Love is Blind history, 11 couples have chosen to say I do at the end of it. And nine of those are still together. I don't know, maybe I'm getting soft in my old age, but if I'm Netflix, I gotta be proud of this. You got strangers falling in love without seeing each other? This shit is kind of impressive. And before y'all say, well, they only been married for a few years, who knows how long it's gonna last. This shit is already lasting longer than most regular marriages. And y'all not even on TV. Anyway, mini rant over. The point is that Amy and Johnny are still doing good. Amy got that Jessica Rabbit drip on. Their families are still close. And for some reason, they're taking Christmas photos like this. What in the Joe Dirt even is this? Then they take us over to Gigi, who we find out is pregnant. Vanessa's shaking in her boots trying to keep her shit together. They're all trying to get the tea on this kid that she's expecting. And I'm here on my couch wondering who's the kid next to her. Apparently, that's Blake, who's the father of that thing. Holy moly. Yeah, she calls him her partner. And I guess she was getting ready to go on Perfect Match Season 2. And then just mess around and fell in love. Trevor's somewhere backstage like... Why would that stop you from going on the show? <laughs> okay, now we're over to Jeremy who's dressed like, you know when you used to go to your grandma's house and she had the same three candies? The first candy was those little watermelon ones, which if they looked into it, there was probably cocaine in them. Then she had the little caramel Werther's and then finally like the assorted fruit ones. That's what Jeremy was, Jer Jeremy was dressed like the assorted fruit. <laughs> Y'all are probably at home like, these are the jokes that we had to wait two days for. Yeah. 
Anyway, they asked Jeremy, bro, are you seeing anybody right now? And he's like, you bet your bottom dollar I am. Nick Lachey is like, you know what? I think she's backstage. You guys want us to like bring her out? You guys want to meet her? And freaking crowd's going crazy. Well, yeah, bring her out. Then the shit got quieter than like the opening scene of the Goofy movie. And now, without further ado, Principal Mazer. These fools bring out Sarah Ann, who looks like she just got hit with one of those glitter bombs that those YouTube engineers be making trying to catch those dudes that be stealing their Amazon packages. You know those guys? Even the freaking crowd was hating on Sarah Ann. Has there been a more hated girl in Love is Blind History? You guys are gonna tell me in the comments or remind me of someone else, but this was tough. Okay, then we go over to Laura who's dialed in on Zoom because she had to be at a work trip. AD's over there looking like, what's a work trip? <laughs> they start with Jeremy and the whole were you engaged thing and we're not gonna get into that because I already covered it on my channel. Then they go into asking why he lied about his location. This dude is talking in circles. I don't even know what he was even saying. Uh, I, I don't, I, I don't, I didn't intentionally lie about that. All I can say right now is that Blake is also here for the tea and for that reason, Blake, you can stay. Laura's basically like, you would have never told me the truth if I didn't call you out. Freaking Jeremy's like, what do you mean? Remember, I came home and because I remember I came in, I, fr I parked in the front and I walked upstairs and you were asleep. And remember, I was like, babe, I was with Sarah Ann. I dropped her home too. I was out with her, but we didn't kiss. We didn't. My email, a little smooch. I was with, I was with her. I just dropped her off. Just wanted to be transparent with you. Remember? Uh, you might have been asleep. Laura's like, I should have been waiting for you on the front porch. Now she's stealing his mom's lines. Ugh, this girl still has the weakest comebacks. But Kwame's here for all the tea. Anyway, Laura's here doing the Laura thing, calling him every name in the book. She's like, you're a freaking clown. Now for some reason, Sarah Ann jumps in. You want to call him a clown? Why well, I think you're a clown. Because you the one that said that I'm a pick-me girl. And guess who's a pick-me girl? It's you. Sarah Ann thinks she ate, but all you hear is grunts and groans all over that place. That whole speech was giving this same energy. If you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? <gasps> oh, that's no. In the sense that, no. you know what I mean? Like, no. what I'm saying that Then freaking Jessica, of all people, jumps in. She's like, yeah, well, you are a pick-me girl. I guess Jessica thinks that we forgot that she low-key did the same thing. No, 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 like the same Jessica who's now best friends with Micah, of all people? No, I'm just wondering, I just, I'm just wondering. Then Vanessa asks Jeremy and Sarah Ann, did y'all really not kiss being out until 5 a.m.? They're both very adamant that they did not. And I have no reason not to believe them. Do I think he grazed the booty on the goodbye hug? Absolutely. Laura's like, I don't care what they did or didn't do. They're both disgusting human beings. We're like, why wouldn't you care that they didn't do anything? Like, yes, your man is out with another woman until 5 a.m., which is not ideal. But like... That wouldn't be worse if he was out there just smashing her to high heaven. You don't care? What do you mean? Can we take the small victory? Then we get some never before seen footage from the leg party. Now, if you remember my other video, I was asking like, why the hell is AD calling out Sarah Ann? Why isn't Laura talking to Sarah Ann? But apparently they did talk. So now we get to see the footage of that conversation. And in the clip, it didn't look like Laura kept that same energy. Sarah Ann does say sorry. Laura's like, no, 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 you're fine. I did take it as disrespect, but that man is a literal clown robot. No, I gotta write that one down. Literal clown robot. Then we see Jimmy catching some strays because apparently Jeremy was like, he just doesn't want to end up looking as bad as Jimmy does, which is super lame. They asked Jimmy, how do you feel about this? He's like, well, it kind of tracks because when I was at my low point, all the other dudes was picking me up. And this dude, Jeremy, was just basically saying, he didn't want to look as bad on TV as I did. Then they asked AD, what does she think of this Sarah Ann apology? What do you think she's going to say? Of course she ain't here for it. But Sarah Ann's not surprised. She's like, I don't talk to the girls. This is, remember when Chelsea jumped in and she's like, well, yeah, that's because she unfollowed all the girls, but not our fiance. And I mean, that did get a crowd reaction, but it's not as wild as it sounds. Like, I would imagine the guys just weren't as mean to her. So why would she have any reason to unfollow them? Plus, if she unfollowed them, how the hell is she going to slide into their DM? <laughs> Anyway, then Chelsea's still at it. She's like, well, every time I see him, they're broken up. Nick and Vanessa ask Jeremy, like, yeah, what's up with that? He's like, look, yes, we've had our ups and downs, but we're still fighting for each other. These two will not last, but today they seem to be happy. Then they talk about all that social media swirl about them living together 
and Sarah Ann saying the show's for entertainment, which I truly do not care about. I still don't think it's that crazy that Sarah Ann sent this man that DM. He still had to act on it. But Sarah Ann is super freaking annoying. But also, Jeremy is super freaking annoying. But also, also, Laura is super freaking annoying. Laura's out there still groveling like, oh, my 96-year-old grandma was on the way to my wedding. Poor thing, probably still on the way. She's like, he met my family. He held my dog. Lady, what are you even talking about? Laura says she just wants an apology. Sarah Ann and Jeremy are stumbling all over that stage, but they both do indeed give her an apology. Good, enough of this. They ask Laura, Laura, so are you dating anyone right now? And she's like, yes, I am. And that's the last we hear about it. And you know what's funny? She's over here talking about, oh, great. That apology only took me a whole year to get. Meanwhile, she's on TV talking about apologizing for bean dip gate. It's probably been about the same amount of time. Moving on. Good riddance. If I never have to hear about these three again, I promise I'm going to be a better person. Anyway, then they bring out public enemy number one. Freaking Trevor. Looking worse than he's ever looked. I know we got that outfit at Ross. The people at Ross shouldn't even have sold it to him. They should have been like, don't you have outfits at home? Huh? Don't you have another outfit at home that you should be, you should be attending to and wearing? Didn't you tell that other outfit you loved it? Sometimes I really just do be saying stuff. Anyway, didn't I tell you Nick and Vanessa ain't come to play today? They let this dude know. All right, you bitch ass nigga, you know we got the text, right? These texts prove that you went on Love is Blind with a whole girlfriend and you was texting her the whole time. Chelsea's out there in the crowd pretending to be shocked, knowing damn well she probably cast this Neanderthal. And when I say they reading these texts, they are reading these texts. And look at Kenneth over there shaking his head. Shut up, Kenneth. If anybody should understand Texas, you, you freaking screenager. So they go through every one of these texts and they tell the rest of the crowd the whole story if they ain't ready to know it. Y'all know it because you came to my channel and watched my video, so I ain't even going to re-unpack that. But they're all looking like Trevor, like, okay, so what's your side of the story? Soon as they ask that, this man goes into the Kenneth challenge and ain't a dolphin in sight to get him out of it. Soon as he snaps out of his stroke, he's like, well, I had a whole thing planned of what I wanted to say, but now... I don't know. Now Trevor's up there talking like how you talked to the police the first time you got pulled over. He's like, yeah, we were dating, but we're not dating. Like, we went together, but we didn't go together. Like, I never officially asked her, will you go out with me? Check yes, check no, check maybe. Like, we were close, but not that close. Did I say I love her? Yes. But I didn't like her. You said, huh, why did I tell her I wanted to get married to her? <laughs> This dude, Trevor, says he went on Love is Blind to find love. He just wanted to try it out. You know what this feels like? Y'all ever watch To Catch a Predator with Chris Hansen? Yes. The greatest show in television history? Right. So you know how, like, the little pedal creeps be in there with the decoy, and all of a sudden, Chris Hansen pops out of nowhere, and he's like, what are you doing? And then these guys are like, I knew what this was. Like, shut the hell up. You just got caught. This dude, Trevor, is literally seizing up there. It's kind of like his publicist told him, whatever happens, just say the word therapy. Freaking weirdo. Then they go over to Chelsea and they're like, Chelsea, what do you think about all this? Now all of a sudden she had a hunch the whole time. Okay, Chelsea. <laughs> Trevor's like, no, no, no. That was real love that I had for Chelsea. And when it didn't work out, I was heartbroken. You can even ask Johnny. You guys like Johnny, right? Tell him, Johnny. Then here go Amy out of nowhere. You were sad leaving Chelsea or were you sad leaving the show? <laughs> okay, Amy, get some words in. Trevor then goes full on four year old. He's like, Can I please leave now? Papa Nick's like, Yeah, sure, of course you can leave anytime you want. This is a free country. Then proceeds to grill him for five more minutes about not coming on this show for fame. Which, again, was like to catch a predator. Because you know how they be like trying to tell Chris Hansen, like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'll never do this again. Please, can I leave? Can I please leave? And Chris Hansen will be like, Yeah. You're free to go right out those doors because <laughs> it's the fucking SWAT team outside waiting. I'm like, get on the ground, get on the ground. Yeah, it was like that. I don't know why that show should have never ended. It was like The Wire, The Sopranos, and To Catch a Predator. Those are like the best ones. Anyway, after that last piece of grilling, Nick was like, all right, now you can go. Get your bitch ass out of here. Okay, next up, Vanessa says we're over to the couple that we were all rooting for, AD and Clay. Who the hell's we, though? They want to know what happened after the show. Did you guys have communication? They let us know that they didn't talk for several weeks after the show ended. They want to find out 
who reached out to who first. Freaking AD is like, he hit me, obviously. Clay tells us that he kind of sent a couple messages out that went unanswered, but then finally, you know, she responded. They asked what it was like watching it back, and AD was getting emotional saying it was not easy. And Clay said watching it back made him feel like a dick. Now Clay's at the reunion getting emotional talking about he made a mistake at the altar and the 80s the love of his life. He even tells us that he's been going to therapy, more than one therapist just to get the right fit. Who even knows if he's telling the truth? He might have should have brought the receipt. They ask AD, would you consider dating Clay again? She says, hmm, next question. They ask Clay, would you consider dating AD again? And he says, absolutely. And somehow, they're both lying. AD tells him, you had your chance and you played in my fucking face. You never wanted to get married. Clay's like, that's not true. And AD's like, then why the hell are we not married? And that is a good question. I don't know. I guess Clay's saying he feels like he needed help, but right now he's putting in the work to become a better person. And Nick Lachey believes him because he's out there lifting him up. You could just tell that Nick and Vanessa, like I said, okay, they're doing a much better job at this reunion, but you can tell that they have favorites because some people get like super grilled and then some of these people don't even get brought up at all or called out for their transgressions. I'm just saying, like it's a good performance from Nick and Vanessa, but it ain't perfect. Anyway, then they asked AD what it felt like watching Clay's parents have that moment. Y'all know that moment. And AD's like, yeah, it kind of just helped close that loop for me and made me realize that I didn't want to end up like Clay's mom. Then Nick asked Clay, like, did your dad ever give you that apology that your mom kind of told him he owed you? Clay uses about 10 to 20,000 words to essentially say no. They also asked Clay about him watching the other Love is Blind seasons. You know, there was that scene in the episode where, like, he was like, I'm finally watching these Love is Blind episodes and these guys are really just way more mature or whatever, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, Nick's like, what couples were you looking at when you were going back and watching the old seasons? This is where Clay is like, well, you know, the guy that I was really looking up to is Brett. And I'm like, didn't I say on here that Brett and Tiffany would be like great to have as like guidance counselors for Clay and AD? I said that. Anyway, there's just been a lot of pressure on Clay working out his red flags. And I do think Brett could have helped him. But I'm not going to sit up here and act like Tiffany couldn't offer some counsel to AD as well. Anyway, then they asked Brett what he thought about Clay giving him that shout out. Now, freaking Brett's up there getting emotional, like, oh man, I was so humbled, I was so moved. You know, like, me and, you know, my parents' relationship wasn't the best. I just felt good to hear that, you know, black man to black man. Well, hold up, like, did y'all get a little emotional too? Then Nick and Vanessa lost all the momentum because for some reason, now they want to talk about some Amy and Johnny highlights. Literally, what even is an Amy and Johnny highlight? Okay, the Paris photos, they went crazy. Okay, then they let the ex-cast members ask questions from the audience to the current cast. Let's just go through some of these real quick and see what we want to talk about. All right, let's see. They asked Jessica, what did your kid think about all this? And I guess Jessica was like, she ain't really let her watch all that stuff. But now Chelsea's her auntie. Cool. They asked Johnny a question, were condoms not an option? This dude is like, condoms were always an option. This dude is obviously lying. He has no idea what they are. Um, Amy's like, yeah, I had to educate him a lot. She's still not on birth control, and he didn't get a vasectomy. Excellent. They asked a question for Chelsea about the Jess and Laura bar conversation. Now, that is a great question. Chelsea's like, well, yeah, it was a bit awkward for me. Oh, it would be awkward. Wouldn't that be awkward? That's your friend now? But she was asking Laura, like, what's up with Chelsea and Jimmy? She didn't care about your friendship then. But I guess now y'all got past it. And I guess Laura... It gets to sit on her high horse, mad at Sarah Ann for doing the same thing that she's sitting next to Jessica, wanting to do. Now Jessica has to apologize for the same thing she just dragged Sarah Ann for. Isn't it crazy how life just be lifing sometimes? Hmm. Okay, lame question here, asking if Jeremy shares his location with Sarah Ann. You guys are super lame. All right, there's a good one here. Jimmy, what did your friend think about Chelsea sharing your secret with the world? Damn, he says she didn't love hearing that. You know, I signed up to go on the show and I could take that stuff, but it's not fair 
to her to have to go through that. And then she's probably still mad at me. It's not it's not good back where I'm from because I'm trying to low key smash that again. And it's <laughs> can I just say anything serious? Let me just be serious. All right. Then Nick asked the panel, like, what do y'all think about that? Like, was it messed up for Chelsea to tell a secret on TV that she said that she wouldn't tell anyone? And Jimmy said that it was important to him not for her not to do that. What do you guys think about that? This freaking cast is so scared of Chelsea to raise their hand and be like, yeah, it was kind of messed up. Even Clay. Well, you know, Nick, that's a great question. And I think that you could look at it both ways. I think it was um, also messed up for her to, you know, maybe say that secret. But I could also see why it wouldn't be messed up for her to say that secret. Clay, if you don't shut up. (laughs) Honestly, in this whole reunion, we don't get a lot of time talking about Chelsea and Jimmy. For better or for worse. I don't know if I needed to hear more about that stuff, but it wasn't a lot. But right here, Jimmy's like, yeah, her telling that secret was a defining moment for me. And pretty much... I was out after that, and I, maybe I was just kind of stringing it along for a bit after, even though I knew it was over, but that was the nail in the coffin. Then sticking with Jimmy, they talk about the whole stupid Instagram thing where he requested Jessica, then unrequested her, no one cares about that. They talk about how Jessica became such good friends with Chelsea, then they ask Jessica, are you friends with Jimmy? And she's like, I thought I was. She goes on to explain that she watched him do an interview where he was just dragging her and telling lies. I guess the whole thing is that Jimmy told the interviewer that Jessica walked out of their last date after 10 minutes. And Jessica's like, what the hell? It was like an hour and a half at least. And Jimmy's like, nope, it was 10 minutes. I don't know what kind of daylight savings Jimmy be on, but Jessica's like, bro, are you crazy? It was an hour and a half. Does anyone have the receipts? And Netflix is like, can you guys just hold my love is wine for a second? Cause we go, someone said receipts. Yeah, wait, y'all, said, y'all want the receipts? Netflix pulled those receipts up so quick with the timestamps, and boy, Georgia was an hour and a half. Netflix is really firing on all cylinders tonight. <sighs> Sadly, now we have to touch on Megan Fox Gate again. And how much do y'all want to bet that Netflix reached out to her people to try to get her as a cameo on this reunion? How much do y'all want to bet? Basically, Chelsea hates that she even brought it up because I guess it's kind of ruining her life and the internet is dragging her for filth, which. You know, we all did it in some form or fashion, but I guess the internet really just be taking it to the next level. And I probably would bet also that that's why they didn't go so hard on Chelsea, how she treated Jimmy in their relationship at the reunion. Because they're probably like, damn, the whole internet is dragging this girl. She's getting bullied. She's feeling sad. So Nick and Vanessa just took it easy on her because the internet made her sad. Which is not fair for us. We're trying to get the answers that we deserve. But that's just my little hypothesis. All right, we're winding down, but before we end, we got some more baby news. They show some clips from Zach and Bliss's baby shower, and we find out that Alexa is also pregnant. Johnny is shaking in his freaking boots. And speaking of Alexa, they let her ask a question, and she asks Kenneth and Brittany, hey, did y'all ever think about just smashing to see if you guys could spark a crave? And honestly, when she asked that question, I was like, wait, Kenneth and Brittany are there? Even Brittany was like, oh, wow, finally you guys talked to us, which... It is crazy. They were not even looked at, spoken to, heard from, a peep. And Brittany was looking good too. Anyway, Brittany's like, well, to answer your question, no, we didn't talk about getting intimate to see if there was a crave because obviously Kenneth is gay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She didn't say that. But she was thinking it. But no, she's going on about how she made this promise to herself not to get intimate on the show and she wanted to stay true to that commitment. Freaking Johnny's over there looking like, well, you should still get on birth control because you can never be too safe out there. <laughs> I don't know why Johnny's catching so many strays today. I'm really sorry about that. Anyway, then Nick calls out Ken and Snippy for using the phone so much. And look, there's no other way to put this. Kenneth looks terrible. This nigga's bow tie is so slumped over, it looks like Chelsea. <laughs> anyway, this nerd is like, You guys know I'm a principal, right? I love my parents. I love my students. I need to stay connected. (laughs) Literally shut up. They start joking about the Dolphins, but Nick Lachey ain't here for none of that shit. He's like, enough with the games. You ain't seen phased by the breakup. Some people even calling it gaslighting. What say you? Ken Carson tells him, everyone processes grief differently. You know, I even called Clay in shambles after the breakup. Oh yeah, you called Clay? Yeah, I bet you did. But whatever. For some reason, we find out that Brittany and the number two Kensel 
talk every day and they're just like some best friends and she knows the people at the school. Why do you even know the people at the school? And speaking of wine, why the hell is Izzy here? Probably for the free wine. All right, then I guess we get another oh my golly wally moment of the episode. And I don't know if I recorded it earlier, but the whole Trevor scene was a oh my golly wally moment. If I didn't say it, then I'm just saying it now. Anyway, this is when the whole Matthew conversation starts. We find out that he rejected his invite to come to the reunion, which why isn't it required for these people to go to the reunion. Like Netflix, if y'all gonna be out here turning these people into low-grade celebrities, the least they could do is show up at the reunion and not have boyfriends and girlfriends before they go on the show. But yeah, the crazy thing here is when they ask AD, have you ever met up with Matthew after the show? I'm thinking like there's no way she would have met up with this dude. Why would she have met up? Yeah, they met up twice and went on two dates. They asked her if she cracked that nut the pistachio. That was their words. AD says the first date was just him apologizing. Yeah, AD? How did he apologize? How did he make it up to you? No, I'm just, because I'm just asking. No, no, no. I'm just, how, like, what, what did he do? How, what? Then she says for the second date, he cooked her dinner. Word. You went to his house. Who was doing the eating? She says he made chicken and rice, and I know for a fact that chicken ain't had no seasoning. Then AD says that their connection just fizzled out after a couple days. She tells us that his day is just all so structured, and hers is not at all. AD, you didn't have to tell us that. What you're saying is this man has a full-time job. The question is, did y'all smash? Why is Nick and Vanessa Lachey asking Sarah Ann and Jeremy if they kissed for the 15,000th time because they was out until 5 a.m. Because you can't hang with someone until 5 a.m. without kissing. Can you go to someone's crib without kissing for a late night dinner? Why did they not ask what happened? Was it intimate? I've been giving y'all props the whole show for being good hosts. But no, no, no. AD's a fan favorite, so we can't push up on her. Y'all didn't want to know if there was a little smoochy smooch action or a little coochie coochie. Okay, last scenes here. We catch up with Chelsea and Kwame. Kwame is still limited to 12 words per day. Chelsea is still a lot. Kwame bought this Batman costume from Timu. Then we find out that Izzy, Micah, and Jessica are all going to be on Perfect Match Season 2. That comes out this summer. I will be there. Izzy said his credit is fixed. Brennan is talking in tongues. And they asked Clay if he microwaves Gatorade. This dude, Clay's like, look, man, my dad cheated. I'm liable to do anything. No, I'm just kidding. He didn't microwave Gatorade. Boom, and that's the Love is Blind season six reunion. Holy moly, we made it through. Was this the most entertaining season of Love is Blind? What's your vote? Let me know in the comments. Also, you may be wondering what little drippy drip I have on. And yes, I said I was going to make some freaking um, Oh My Golly Wally merch, and I have officially made it. The link to this sweater is in the description of this video like in the bio there and it might be connected to the little bottom part too and because y'all are so cool i got a little promo code if you use omgw10 that's oh my golly wally 10 one zero you get a little 10 percent off and free shipping because nobody should ever have to pay for shipping oh let me do my little thing as always thanks for checking out taste take if you enjoy the video make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button in the comments, listen, we're going to talk about everything you want to talk about. But if I was making my own comments, I would give y'all a comment to say thank y'all for the support all season long. We hit a lot of major milestones on the channel. And a lot of that is thanks to you. So I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this stuff, comment on this stuff, share on this stuff. If you guys see me in the real world, you guys stop and say nice things. And that is all very cool so i must thank you for that because it means a lot we are working hard over here so i just want to say thanks yep not even a joke that's not even a joke there (laughs) thanks for the time y'all peace oh if you want to see the shirt it's here this is how it looks this is like very close to how it would look
This is a prototype. Anyway. Also, listen, let me just hold up, what am I got? Let me let me just let me just clear something up. You know, I've been working with Netflix, you know, covering their stuff for a long time. So, you know, sometimes I get the privilege of getting the content a little early. So I can watch it early, write the review, record the review, edit, and put it up for you guys. Sometimes they don't send it early. So for the reunion, they did not send it early. So I had to just watch it at the time it was on, write my notes. And then, like, there's another thing that just gets in the way of all of this. It's like my job. So I had to like work, then I had to come home and then write this stuff and then film it. So it's like I know y'all are waiting patiently for it. But sometimes it just be taking time. So thanks for your patience. Sheesh. <laughs> I hope it was worth the wait. And if not, season seven, I'll be better. <laughs> Mm-hmm.